Blackness must have rolled from the mind of God to give me wool in hair and thick warm lips and eyes that were dark and wise and free. All before the horrors came, my ebony soul must uncoil and trample for flare to create the drum. Dance uncaged by white hands. I must have a culture lost in the forgotten world of my dead soul. Well, long ago, I threw a spear in childish play. But the horror came with grin and holy words to take my magic and tongue, to crush my gods, break my mountains in my bush, brought me unknown to the gates of Cain. With death and blood, seek me in the rancid slush of tempered mirror. I must have a culture. Besides the housing projects, the wasted lights, the crowded rooms, reeking it with darkness and the ignis spill of the dried spell of pot hissing dope spikes. There must be more to remember. More to love for my conquered history than the bowing black faces of Africa. More than a veil in an ancient body that keeps on rising from the dust of America with a powerful song that will trim the earth. I must have a culture that is not madness, not anger. Somewhere I let the proud black men become feeble with white ideas of success and power, degraded behavior. I must find my culture on the face of the Milton tribes, dying hopelessly in the gutters. Sleeping on broken steps, cooking in greasy kitchens. I must wait. I must wait for the old folks shouting church, and the bed and the sweating musicians burn their hip tunes, and the big wrong sisters flirt with their sensual dog eyes. That's my love. That's my love. My culture. My country. Written by John Anthony Starr, was published in 1967. Here's one more bite. Excuse me, sir. Who am I? That's how I want to begin my life anew. With pain and blood and questions, welling from a thousand years of torture set free. God, I want to know where the secret lies. All this hush about freedom. I want to understand my blackness, unbridged by time. I want to see this exit from this chamber. Unlock the weirded mice that hides myself. There's a new feeling fear about my loins. Waiting to track noetic white girls and you the scrolls the frantic white men they have destroyed. There is an urge to kill me in the hot swamps at night while my pants are down in exotic lust to find themselves in the flesh of charcoal women. Who am I that you spit and burn your rituals and crosses for my death? I know, I know who I am, and I can't hate you anymore. Even we fight it out in the long days of summer, spilling blood, creating potential with symbols, but I know, I know, we are here together, needing to survive the trick of nature, trying to wrap the spiritual cold I brought from the wilds of Africa, and my rain dance, which you have forgotten. My lips are for enough you enlist because they whisper more than reason. More than a sacrifice message of the blues. I want to get naked before the world. I want to get naked before the world and walk black and know who I am. And you must know too. It's important to stop our lying to one another. I was a hunter with bare feet and a proud dark spirit. Not a damn chair car pointer. My empires. Well, Molly, song hey seek with flat nosed kings. Now we cannot dismiss that. Now it will be easy for me to sleep and dance and laugh because I know who I am by John Anthony Stowers. So here's my last poem right here. And it's dedicated to Food Not Bombs, Food Not Lines. Here we go. This started in 1996. I was only a freshman in high school. I heard about Food Not Bombs and ran to Cucamonga. I was hopeless, not even knowing what I'll ever eat good food in my life. Eating fried chicken, fast food killing one another, but food not bombs was my therapy to understand about nutritious value of food. How to eat cow, how to eat brine rice, how to understand where these vegetables come from. See, for me, I grew up in Los Angeles in a condition where there was more smog and more drugs killing every single person in my childhood. But food not bombs saved me. It brought me to an understanding that people throw food away every single day and they turn it into something that is beautiful for us to eat. Food not bombs 
was the reason I left home when I was 19 years old. I traveled with an organization that studied food not bombs and food not laws. This was from 1996 to 2008. I've learned about food, the food not bombs. I cried many nights when I saw food was wasted on the streets. I cried many nights when I saw people sleeping on the streets and they had nothing to eat. I saw food not bombs. I saw the inspiration in Hurricane Katrina. I saw the inspiration in Santa Cruz. When I first came here, it had nothing else to eat but food not bombs. I am grateful to write this poem. It took me over 15 years to write. I had to cry many nights and find out would I ever be able to recite it to the person that started Food Not Bombs. I honor you. If it wasn't for you, I don't think there would ever be no such thing as a lyrical eye to write this. But let me get on my knees and finish this poem and say, Food Not Bombs, thank you. Food Not Bombs, thank you. It's what you do for all of us. It's beautiful. I'm also a lyricist around town, and I go by infinity. So, um, yeah, first of all, Food Not Bombs rocks, definitely. Uh, they surf here, Saturdays, 4 o'clock. There's ways to get involved, there's a sign-up sheet there. And, um, well, here I go, I'll share this piece. It's called World Citizens. <laughs> World Citizens, species of Earth. Who are you to tell me I'm illegal since birth? Crazy when men driven by money first. Humanity at its worst. Kids dying of thirst and you drink Don Perignon? What's going on? Don't you care? Judgmental, dready here? This world in fear when criminals don't have to hide their faces. People